Bob Auber. I'm the construction manager here at Euclid Creek Tunnel on the Eastwood Treatment Plant grounds here off of Lakeshore Boulevard. And today we're about to uh, plan a, another scheduled blasting operation here. We're trying to excavate the shaft down to its design depth. This shaft provides an access portal from the surface to the tunnel. And also, most importantly, half of the structure acts as a hydraulic uh, interception of flow from local sanitary uh, uh, storm sewers that we're picking up and we're diverting into the shaft. You have to hydraulically drop the flow from the ground surface down to a depth of 200 feet with a series of baffles, so five foot steps that the flow hydraulically jumps from one step to the next. Uh, you can't just drop flow 200 feet. There'll be a lot of erosion on the concrete, as you can imagine. You will take that flow into our storage tunnel instead of what's been happening. It's been going out to the tributaries and lakes because right, our man. treatment plant cannot handle the capacities. So Project Clean Lake here is to try to contain these CSOs during the wet weather condition and to mitigate any sewage, mixture sewage CSO going out into the lakes and tributaries into Lake Erie. The last thing is something we've been doing in our shaft excavations for over 25 years here in Cleveland. It's the most efficient, economical way of getting through the harder zones of rock, and it's also a very safe way of doing it, by the way. It doesn't sound like it is, but it is. It's so precise, it's like surgery, uh, and we're blasting at such low levels that it's nowhere near any range that could cause any damage to structures or homes. Uh, we have two seismographs that we're utilizing to monitor the blast vibration and decibel levels. And on top is a solar cover. You see that powers it. We usually put them at the closest utility or closest structure that we want to maintain and monitor throughout the blasting operation. This is all read remotely and sent computerized uh, with the results to us we get it the same day. In preparation for the, the, uh, for the blasting here, uh, the crews, surface crews here putting on the blast cover, cover the shaft, as we had mentioned earlier, to prevent any fly rock from being expelled into the air. Of course, we don't want anybody close to the perimeter of the blast area, so there'll be horns that go five minutes before the blast, and then there'll be another horn, long horn, one minute before the blast, and then the, uh, the blaster, which we call, is the individual who's responsible for overseeing the blast and detonating the blast, will actually shot out fire in the hole. That's after they've checked all perimeters to make sure they're secure, and then he'll trigger the blast. You'll hear it, and you will somewhat feel it, and then you'll hear an all clear long horn.